<laughs> By a show of hands, how many of you have done a jigsaw puzzle? Right on. Okay. Well, last week I was talking to a couple of friends of mine, and I discovered that there's kind of three basic categories of people when you're considering a jigsaw puzzle. There are those that downright hate them. There are those who could take them or leave them. And there are the lovers. Well, I, I'm a puzzle lover. I find them challenging, but relaxing. I'm always amazed at how a bunch of little random pieces can fit together perfectly and create a picture. How something that while in process, it looks like nothing, can become an integral part of something bigger, something spectacular, something amazing. Amongst those who love jigsaw puzzles, there are countless preferences. Some like a little puzzle, some like a large puzzle. Just a little side note, did you know that the largest puzzle in the world is right here in St. Louis, at the largest puzzle warehouse in the world. It has 44,600 pieces. My daughter and I have seen it. Can you imagine? Right? Right. That's just a little side note. Some like pictures that are famous and unique, like the Mona Lisa or the pyramids, the Eiffel Tower. Some uh, that are equally as beautiful but more common, like a landscape or a seascape or other people's preference. And some prefer the fun, kind of whimsical, like a bunch of gumballs or a Where's Waldo. As I was seeking the Lord about what he wanted to share today, I sensed that the Lord wanted to talk about three things that don't at first seem to go together. A scripture in Galatians 5.1, it was for freedom that Christ set us free. A scripture in Ephesians 4.16, which says, in, um, I'm sorry, I have to move this because this light. Which says in part that we are to become the mature body with Christ the head and a jigsaw puzzle. Now only the Lord can see how these three things, seemingly very different, Ephesians 4, Galatians 5, and a jigsaw puzzle, can actually make an important message. He began to speak to me of the different stages of our walk with him. And then he began to weave together a picture of how a jigsaw puzzle is like a life and how a life spent in his presence can give us freedom and a life spent letting him change us can make us more like him and a life spent in his service can connect us with many others and together we can make a beautiful picture. So back to the jigsaw. The method for setting up of the assembly of a jigsaw might differ from puzzle lover to puzzle lover. I'm going to tell you today about the way I like to do it, not because it's the right way, it's just a way. When I get a puzzle, the first thing I like to do is dump it out on the table. Since I almost always used to do a thousand piece puzzle, you can imagine the pure chaos that creates. Pieces are in a huge pile. Some happen to fall right side up, but most are upside down. <laughs> None are where they will end up when it's all said and done. The only hope of making any sense lies in the painstaking effort of turning each piece right side up. I'm not generally very patient. People who know me know this. But I do this step anyway, and in doing this, I'm reminded of the hand of the Lord on my life. After all, isn't that what the Lord did for us? Before I came to know Jesus, I was definitely living my life upside down. As the scripture said, I had gone astray and turned to my own way. I was living my life in bondage, lost in darkness. I bet it was the same for you. Like these puzzle pieces, I lived in chaos and everything was upside down. Praise God, it was for freedom that Christ set me free. And now I can live my life right side up. After the pieces of the puzzle are turned right side up, the next thing that I do is I separate out all the straight edges. These straight pieces have an important role. They are the framework, the boundary, the outer limits, the structure by which everything else comes together. Even though this step takes time and I'm tempted to dive right in and try to put some pieces together, I know that I need the framework. In our analogy, 
The framework is Jesus. When we come to know him as Savior, he begins to teach us about his lordship, and we learn about boundaries. The Apostle Paul said that um, the unsaved don't even know about sin. They're just out living their lives. But when we come to know Jesus, he brings our chaos into order. He shows us the boundaries, the framework that will keep us safe, that will sanctify us. Although each walk is different and no two people have the exact same experiences, we can count on the framework, which is Christ. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, 12, Now we see through the glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know in whole, even as I am known. Jesus, like my puzzle, is our framework. He is our loving, grace-filled boundary. Once we come to know who he is, we understand that the rest of our lives on this earth will be spent being shaped and changed into the person he sees through his sanctified blood, shaped into the person who can fulfill a unique destiny. The next step is to find uh, the pieces of the puzzle that seem to go together. This part can be slow, it can be frustrating, it can feel hopeless, sometimes impossible. Some sections of the puzzle might go quickly, just like some of the saints we know who grew up as believers or come from Christian homes, had an awesome example set before them. We're always right side up, easily found their way to the Savior. But some of the sections will be arduous and take forever because colors run, pieces have sharp corners, they're odd shaped, like some of our friends or our loved ones. Their journeys to the Master haven't been straight, it hasn't been easy, it may not have even happened yet. In my experience, this could be describing my journey to Jesus. I don't know about you, but I've been trying to let the Lord shape me in certain areas for years, rotate me to his will. Although there are many other inward feelings and outward behaviors that have faded away, and I'm thrilled to say that as they faded away, a little bit more of Jesus shines through me and through you to a hurting world. Jesus has given us a framework. We know where the boundary is, but now we need to find our place. Where does our peace fit? He wants to mature us, get us on solid food, and this journey never ends. He's continually modifying us to be useful vessels. He's Jesus, so he can use any method he chooses. Sometimes he speaks directly to us through his Holy Spirit, and certainly he speaks to us through his word. But sometimes he uses the saints. <coughs> Excuse me. If we are fortunate, we find others that fit together with us. And like some of you in this room, we build friendships and relationships that begin here on earth, but will last through eternity. The scripture says that iron sharpens iron, and super special relationships sharpen each other, challenge each other to do what it takes to go further with Jesus. We speak the truth of the scripture to one another, encouraging one another to lay down our old ways, our need to control, our need to judge or gossip, feel guilty about the past or fear the future. I try to keep an open heart to those who speak wisdom. I want my rough places plained and my crooked made straight. I bet you do too. Well, as I said, he's Jesus, so he can use any method. And sometimes we're faced with those pieces that just don't seem to fit. Although this is a challenge and frustrating, we must realize that the peace or the people that just don't fit still have an important place in this framework of life. They matter to Jesus as much as me or you, and they have purpose, and his picture will not be complete without them. The scripture reminds us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and we need a savior. Not one is better than another, and Christ paid the same price for all of us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is a universal us. This means everyone. Sometimes it's hard to accept those that don't walk the same path as us. It's tough to understand those that don't see things the way we do. But Jesus uses them to shape us as well. Loving the people in our lives that aren't like us, maybe they aren't Christians, maybe they're mean or angry 
they're nasty. Maybe they're just weird. We are committed and commanded to love one another. In fact, we are commanded to love one another as Christ first loved us back there when we were yet sinners. And to love others as much as we love ourselves. That's a tough one, isn't it? So we keep searching for the ones that we can build with, those that challenge us to be all that we can be in Christ, and we ask the Lord God to change our hearts toward those that can frustrate, hurt, and harm. Remember, in the framework of life, every piece belongs here. Jesus loves them as he loves us. After toil and time and frustration and more time, we come to the close of our puzzle. And if we're very fortunate, we can look back at the picture, whether it's been an ordinary land or seascape, or an amazing work of art, and we can see how the master has woven the unique picture together. During those times of nearly giving up, we can see where the Lord intervened to help us along our journey. During the times we gave up control and trusted him for answers, how he delivered in a miraculous way. We can rejoice that although we were odd in shape and rough in texture, he used us some in hidden ways and some in more obvious ways, but all of us to serve him and bring honor to his name. In closing me, I say that each of us is a piece in the Great Commission jigsaw puzzle. Some have the role of teachers, some servants, some leaders, some intercessor, but all of us have the opportunity each and every day to show Jesus to the other pieces of the jigsaw puzzle to represent freedom, to show love and kindness to those dear and close to us, as well as those who irritate, frustrate, rub us the wrong way. We may take advantage of the privilege that we have and live every day as if we are the final missing piece in the puzzle, the one that God is turning right side up. He's rotating to his will, and he's fitting it into a specific slot that he created just for us. Thank you.